My name is Dr. Flanagan and I'm a urologist at the Vancouver General Hospital with the University of British Columbia. I serve as the clinical lead to the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program in the Sexual Health Rehabilitation Clinic. Welcome to our clinic. We're going to provide a few videos that will serve as educational resources for those patients and partners interested in sexual rehabilitation after the prostate cancer treatment. The Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program is a clinical program served to provide supportive care services to prostate cancer patients and their partners. We're both a clinical program as well as a research program, so a lot of the activities that we do uh, include capturing data and information that will help us make the program better, as well as hopefully contributing to the literature both nationally and internationally. Our programs run through a series of modules. Each of these modules provides different information with particular topics that we'll talk about shortly and patients and their partners are welcome to engage in any of these modules that are of interest to them. The first module is an introduction to prostate cancer and primary treatment options. The second module which is relevant to our videos here are managing the impact of prostate cancer treatments in sexual function and intimacy. Our third module is lifestyle management and includes dietetics and, and exercise. The fourth module is the recognition and management of treatment related side effects of androgen deprivation therapy. Our fifth module is a pelvic floor physiotherapy for bladder concerns, urinary incontinence and other voiding symptoms. Our sixth module includes counseling services and we have an excellent counselor that can help patients and their partners work through any distressing times related to their prostate cancer treatment. And finally, our most recently added module is Module 7, which discusses advanced prostate cancer treatments. For Module 2, our Sexual Rehabilitation Clinic, this has been initiated at our Vancouver site and has recently, over the past year, expanded to several different geographic locations across the province. This includes Surrey, Victoria, Kelowna, and Prince George. And the purpose of this expansion is being to break down geographic barriers for patients and really facilitate access to care. We want patients that are receiving prostate cancer treatment across the province to be able to access these resources in supportive care and sexual rehabilitation. Our administrative leads are Dr. Tia Higano, who is the medical director of the entire program, Monita Sundar, who's the provincial program manager, and Jenna Bentley, who's the program coordinator for PCSC. If you're accessing our sexual rehabilitation clinic module, the first thing that we like to do once we have you registered is to attend our group session. The purpose of the group session is to provide a platform of information. This will be objective data on normal sexual functioning, how prostate cancer treatment can impact your sexual functioning, as well as some of the strategies to mitigate some of the dysfunction and optimize your overall sexual function and satisfaction. We have three different ways of engaging the sexual rehabilitation clinic. The first option is the conventional in-person face-to-face visit. This is a typical face-to-face -face visit as you've encountered uh, elsewhere in the medical system. You come in for an appointment. Uh, this appointment's typically between 30 and 45 minutes and we exchange information, ask you questions about your past medical history, your sexual functioning, and often perform a physical exam. This is our opportunity to get a good chance to know you and understand what your problems are and how we can help with it. Typically, these visits will occur every three to six months over a two year duration that you can be enrolled in the program. Through this, beyond the uh, clinical interactions, we can also provide education amongst various aspects of sexual medicine treatment, uh, such as penile injection training within the clinic. The second option is a new addition to our program. It's been through collaboration with the University of Toronto and the Princess Margaret Group, where they've created an online Share E clinic. Essentially what this is, an online platform that can become personalized to your specific situation uh, through asking you a series of questions before you uh, fully become enrolled. And this provides personalized information and education throughout your process following prostate cancer treatment. There's also a sexual health clinician 
tied directly to you within this program that you have access to uh, contact, ask questions, and engage with. The third option is a hybrid clinic. So essentially, you can still access the online ShareE clinic content, get all of the online resources, education, and videos, but still access our in-person clinic as well, uh, if you prefer to have face-to-face -face conversations and interactions with clinicians. When we were designing our program, we really wanted to speak to patients and their partners, and we really want to understand what your needs are and, and try to address those through our program. There was a recent study that evaluated and asked patients and their partners what were the needs that you have following prostate cancer treatment. And they came up with five top needs. The first one is they want a pre-treatment discussion of sexual side effects, rehabilitation, emotional impact, and have realistic expectations. We think that we can address a lot of this with our education session uh, that we encourage patients to attend before treatment. Although certainly if, if you get enrolled in the program after treatment, this is still an excellent resource. The second uh, top need that they identified was improved sexual communication within couples. This is something that we really stress within our program and oftentimes having a sexual health clinician present if you bring your partner along for the clinical interactions can be really helpful in adding transparency and just really opening that discussion. The third are strategies for promoting sexual intimacy beyond penetrative intercourse. For some couples this may be very natural and for others it may require some thought process and discussion in the clinic for different ideas and how to approach it, particularly if you have different sexual functioning after treatment than what you're normally used to. The fourth need was attentiveness to the partner's needs. For every prostate cancer survivor, there's often a partner that's involved and also uh, having impact from the distress and the stressors of the prostate cancer treatment in the first place. Uh, this is really important for us in understanding the baseline function of your partner as well as the dynamics and interaction between the patient and their partner. Ultimately, for many, sexual interactions involve an additional person and understanding uh, where we can make progress with this is certainly helpful in the process. The fifth is access to peer support. There are many, many patients that access our program and oftentimes in the group sessions uh, several individuals will have the opportunity to meet and exchange ideas, experiences, and thoughts. So what do our PCSC sexual health clinicians address and, and how do they do it? We use what we call a biopsychosocial framework and approach to sexual function changes. What this means is we understand that there's biological changes that have happened. We understand that there's a psychological impact and this may also have an impact on our social interactions with intimacy and others and how we view ourselves in more of a societal perspective. So like we've mentioned, we like to work with the patient and their partner if they're partnered. This helps enable communication. We provide gu guidance for penetrative and non-penetrative sexual activity. Uh, we use mindfulness-based techniques such as simmering. We provide educational resources and navigate medication coverage. Uh, these educational resources take place in videos such as this, as well as patient handouts and access to additional resources beyond our program. Oftentimes, following prostate cancer treatment, many of the medications that we use for the treatment of erectile dysfunction and other forms of sexual dysfunction can have some degree of coverage uh, for some individuals and we can help facilitate this. We also guide patients through the process of sexual adaptation. We know that there's likely going to be some changes with respect to your sexual functioning and we're well versed and educated in this and can help you uh, work through these changes and optimize um, as close to your baseline function as possible. And finally, we can manage specific types of sexual dysfunction. Changes to desire, climacteria or arousal incontinence, essentially leakage of urine during sexual activity, erectile dysfunction, we use pills, we use devices, we use uh, injections and surgeries uh, when needed. Penile rehabilitation, engaging with uh, treating the, the erections from an early stage and trying to promote 
the optimal healthy recovery of uh, the penis and erectile function, as well as orgasmic dysfunction. So how do you access our program? Reach out to our administrative staff. Uh, you'll need a physician referral into the program. This can come from your treating urologist, radiation oncologist, med medical oncologist, or your family doctor. Um, here are our contact information for the program here in Vancouver. And if you're from elsewhere, uh, you can still reach out to our program and we'll uh, point you in the right direction. Just want to take this opportunity to thank all of our supporters for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program. The Specialist Services Committee provided funding to help us initiate this program in January of 2013. And more recently, the Ministry of Health has provided funding in 2017 that allowed for the provincial expansion of our program uh, to reach more British Columbians uh, with sexual dysfunction and survivorship issues following prostate cancer. I would also like to acknowledge all of the other agencies that have supported our program throughout the years, as well as the individuals and families that have provided generous philanthropic support.